So what I would ask everyone is to uh, please put yourself on mute. And I just want to make a couple of commentaries, so um, which we'll do at the end as well. So this is a now becoming a regular affinity group. Um, we would love one of you to lead a session. This is completely lay led. My colleague John from work, who's on, did a great job last time. I'm sure Larry's going to do a wonderful job this time. But we we would love any of you that obviously enjoy cooking to also volunteer to cook up a storm for us and teach us what you're doing. It can be anything. Um, please, everyone, put yourself on mute. Okay, I'm going to put you on mute. If you didn't, put yourself on one. Um, the, uh, the other thing, um, next Wednesday night and Thursday is the observance of Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av in the Jewish religion is a, a solemn day where uh, traditionally those that observe uh, actually fast. It's the only other fast, full fast day, meeting from sunset to sunset that uh, besides Yom Kippur. Um, yeah, in preparation for that day, some, some ob observant uh, Jewish people um, don't eat meat. So, if you are uh, of that observance level, the good news is you're probably not going to eat what we're cooking tonight, and you do get a buy for tomorrow because it's Shabbat. So, uh, we were very sensitive to Tisha B'Av. We just wanted to throw that out there um, in case that was of interest to you. Okay, so I think Larry is ready to go. Thank you very much. And again, if you are interested in leading one of these, Please, please, please let me know, and um, we'll 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 sign you up for next time. So, without any further ado, Larry, right, Cleo, Danny, Danny, yes, we, yes, Elliot. We should. We need a commercial for the federation. Okay, Elliot. So, first off, everybody, as Danny said, thank you all for coming. We're very excited about these affinity groups. There's a lot of interest in cooking, so this would be far from not the last. Uh, and we, this is proudly being presented by the Federation Jewish Men's Clubs. Most of the people here, I think, know who we are. I'm trying to look and see if there's anybody here who I don't think is part of the Federation. Um, this is a big effort that we're trying to do to engage more guys from all over, even if they're not necessarily uh, affiliated with a club or even a synagogue. We think people's interests are doing it, so we're very proud of what's happening in the Federation. You know, this is this is the, the, the premier movement in terms of trying to engage Jewish guys in Jewish life. So thank you all for coming. And one other thing to say with Danny is, is that um, we have your names, we have your email, so you're gonna get notified for the next session, but please consider to, to invite your friends who like cooking to the next session. We don't know your friends, you know your friends, okay? All right, so uh, bon appetit. There we are. You're on, Larry. Okay, so first of all, I'll apologize for the poor lighting. My electricity went out a little while ago, <laughs> and so I'm doing this by lantern light. So I'll just have to light it uh, the old-fashioned way using uh, my grill lighter, but we'll get it done. So the big thing with trying Chinese food is the prep of the time. And um, I already started by this afternoon cutting the chicken breast. And I'm get it out if you wish. So the chicken breast is already cut up in cubes. Uh, and we're going to mix up a marinade for that. So that uh, a little mixing bowl here, and I'll start with uh, two teaspoons of cornstarch. And I will, as um, a side, 
line, I'll mention that all the ingredients here are kosher. They all have hexers on them. And, um, you know, they, there are kosher versions of them available um, in stores. You know, I personally do a lot of my Chinese food supply shopping at a H Mart, which is a Korean store, but they're Asian food stores and even the regular grocery stores have a, a lot of um, Asian products. Uh, next is two tablespoons of soy sauce. And I prefer the low sodium kind, but you can use um, whatever version you like. You mix that up, and I'll try and show it to you. Um, I use the spoon to kind of press against all the cornstarch and get it to dissolve. And there's an, also an egg white. And I have my handy little egg separator here. And unfortunately, I don't have anything to do with the egg yolk right now, but if I did, if I was doing another recipe that required egg yolks, I would save it and use it for that. But you don't like, I don't like to save uh, opened raw eggs for a long time in the refrigerator. So like anything more than a day, I don't do. Which usually means I'm not saving it. So mix that all together and goes on to the chicken breast. And then mix it all around. And that's going to sit there and marinate while we're doing everything else. All right, so now we're going to cut some vegetables. And I kind of tried to make this uh, recipe um, kind of generic, so I didn't really specify any specific vegetables. It's what you have available, what you like. Um, you know, I happen to have broccoli. I was wanted to do bok choy, but when I went to the store today, the bok choy was in. It was already pre-packaged in huge packages, and I didn't need that much. And otherwise, it would end up going to waste. So I'm probably going to do about half of this broccoli. And let's see if I can show you what I'm doing here. Does that work? I think it does. All right, so I'm just chopping up the broccoli into small pieces. Basically, if you've eaten Chinese food, you've gotten food, it's already, you know, chopped up like this uh, as they prep stuff in the restaurant. Yep. This one tried to get away. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the vegetables onto a plate. And 
and I'm going to cut a red bell pepper. Little trick I learned in getting the seeds out you can punch the stem in and cut kind of pull it out. And you kind of smack it around. And all the seeds on the inside pretty much come out. Side. We'll be left with just the good part of the pepper. There's, uh, I say the good part, the good looking part. The other, the other stuff tastes fine, and you can certainly eat it. And actually, usually I do, but it doesn't look as nice. So the reason why I cut the chicken ahead of time is that saved probably half an hour just cleaning all the fat off and everything and cutting it into nice little cubes. Uh, and you would have gotten bored real quickly looking at me cutting chicken. All right. All right, I, I like to use you know, different color vegetables whenever possible. Uh, makes the dish look nicer and we actually kind of, we taste with our eyes first. All right, um, we're gonna throw some scallions in there. Basically, cut off the, the ends of the scallions and toss that. And you know, if you don't want scallions, you could use regular onion, you could leave it out altogether. But this is very easy, and it's also something you'll see a lot in Chinese cooking. All right, next, garlic. Um, I like to get the garlic cloves already peeled. Uh, Say it's a little bit of effort. It's um, not a big deal if you, you know, have to peel some garlic. The way, the way I like to chop up garlic is take the clove, smash it with the side of the knife, and um, then chop it up, you know, finely. And hey, Larry, you, Larry, yeah, uh, yes? I have a couple of questions while you're doing this. Sure. Yeah, please ask Larry if we use a full bunch of scallions. Uh, I just used half a bunch. Um, it, it really, you know, it depends on what you're cooking and, and you know, how much you want. Okay. Um, you know, you might want one 
value and you if I mean I want a dish with just you know chicken and scallions I've, I've had stuff like that in a restaurant before and okay it's delicious. the other question I have is what kind of oil are you using ah. I was, uh, was going to get to that but I can answer it now I am going to use peanut oil that's what I prefer to use when doing Chinese cooking. Uh, that's what most of the Chinese restaurants use. Uh, but you can use pretty much any kind of oil, cooking oil that has a high smoke point uh, because you're going to have to heat the oil really high and um, or to a high temperature. And you know you want it to just start to smoke. Uh, and that's when you know when it's ready to cook. And uh, I was actually, uh, I'll show you, I was low on peanut oil and um, I was looking for the past couple of weeks for peanut oil and I couldn't find it in any of the stores I was going into and I was starting to wonder if peanut oil was like the new toilet paper, that maybe people were hoarding it. But last night I finally found it, so I have a, a whole bottle of peanut oil in reserve. But you could use corn oil, vegetable oil, canola oil. Uh, I don't think I would use uh, olive oil or certainly not extra virgin olive oil. You don't want something that's going to impart a lot of uh, flavor it's, you know, itself. And I'll also say as an aside, one time uh, I couldn't find the planter's peanut oil, which is what I prefer to use, and I bought some Asian brand that I never heard of in the aforementioned uh, Asian food store. And it had like a very strong peanutty flavor, which I didn't like. So. But certainly, if you've got some, you know, something like, you know, Wesson or, um, you know, whatever, Mazzola, those are, you you know, should be fine. Right. Oh, I thought of one other vegetable that had. Again, different colors. So we'll have red, green, and orange in this. A lot of people like uh, baby corn uh, in their Chinese food, in including myself. Usually I can only find it canned. And yeah, I'll cook with the canned vegetables, but figured for this of this demonstration will be fresh. So I didn't see any fresh baby corn anywhere. So we won't have yellow. But we will have orange and red and green. So I'm just going to cut the orange into uh, the orange, the uh, carrot into strips. Thin strips. Whole idea with cutting the vegetables into small pieces is so that it will cook quickly. Again, I'll say 90% of Chinese food cooking is the preparation before you start cooking. And notice also what I did with the carrot. Now, this pretty much holds true with anything that's round and it's going to rock around. You know, you either cut it in half or you cut a, a side off. That gives you a flat surface that can stick on your cutting board and uh, keep it from rolling around while you're cutting it.
in and we'll also using a chef knife, which is one of my favorites. Uh, it's good for you know cutting vegetables like this. It's not the knife I used when cleaning the chicken. There was a I have a boning knife, which is very good for cleaning chicken and stuff like that. All right, so there's all the, the vegetables cut. I've got the garlic and I think I mentioned ginger too. So I have fresh ginger root. And, and no, I'm not gonna put all of that in there, but I'm gonna cut off a chunk. And I'm gonna use the same peeler, vegetable peeler that I used to peel the carrot. And I'm gonna peel off the skin of the And I don't know if anybody's interested in how I got started cooking Chinese food, but obviously being Jewish, we like Chinese food. I think there's a genetic predisposition to that. Um, but in college, I you know started cooking uh, a lot of Chinese food with my roommates, and you know gradually evolved into you know, started with cooking from like some of the pre-prepared mixes um, where they provided the sauce and the vegetable and you added the meat and, you know, then I bought some Chinese cookbooks and started working with them and now I pretty much just wing it. So kind of like with the garlic, you can take chunks of the peeled chunks of ginger and smush them down. And another option for garlic and uh, ginger, anything else like that, is a device called a garlic press, which I also use sometimes. And basically you stick the, the garlic or ginger, whatever, and then you press it through there. Larry. Larry, um, we yeah. have a question for you. Where did you get the fresh baby corn? And if I do not have fresh ginger, how much powder should I use? Uh, fresh, well, fresh baby corn, as I said, I, I didn't get any today. Um, but, you know, I see it sometimes in produce sections of, um, um, uh, big grocery stores here in New Jersey in my area are Stop and Shop and ShopRite. And I know I've seen them in Stop and Shop before. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever, ever seen it in ShopRite. There's also Acme and there's Whole Foods. Um, what is it? Um, some of the newer places or the newer to the area places are like Aldi and Lidl. Um, I'm, sh I'm sure I'm forgetting some places. You know, uh, you might have, the best bet might be you know, an Asian, a good size Asian food store. Uh, and how much? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I've ever cooked with ginger powder. Now, ginger and or garlic for that matter, and really all these ingredients, you know, you, you can adjust all these things to taste. Um, I don't always use ginger. I think I pretty much always use garlic. My uh, my mother of blessed memory, um, she never met a garlic clove she didn't like. So um, my philosophy is if you think you have enough garlic cloves, add another. Um, 
anyway, the garlic and ginger are chopped. I don't know if there are any other questions uh, along that, uh, along those lines. But I think we're about ready to cook. Oh, and uh, before we got started on all this, I cooked rice and it's sitting there on the stove. It's, it's cooked and the lid's on and it's, you know, staying warm. So just by virtue of keeping the lid on, it will stay warm long enough for what we're doing. If you have a rice cooker, you know, you can have it uh, set ahead of time and it will keep warm for you. And, um, you know, that's what it's designed to do. That's what pretty much all the Chinese restaurants have. I'm just finding a couple pieces of carrot that look like they were a little thick, so cut them in half. Any other questions or are we ready to get started? Or get started with the I oh. do have a question. Uh, wait, wait, wait. We do have a question. How much minced garlic from the jar? Uh, I would say you, you have to look at the jar and see, you know, usually it probably says like one tablespoon equals so many cloves. And, you know, I, I always find it humorous when they, when a recipe says how many cloves of garlic, uh, because you have cloves of garlic, and I can show you examples. You have cloves of garlic that are that size. And you have cloves of garlic that are that size, and everything in between, and probably even bigger and smaller. So it's uh, you know it's all a, a matter of personal taste and how you feel. And uh, if you're used to cooking with fresh garlic, uh, and yes, you can use garlic powder or granulated garlic. Um, you know, it's, and in a pinch, I will do that. Okay, now, uh, before we start cooking, I should uh, do the seasonings. Let me get this out of the way. All right, so the seasonings, kind of like what we did with the marinade, except there's more ingredients, there's no egg white, and um, you know, there's uh, larger quantities too. So we'll start with four teaspoons of cornstarch. And now we'll do four tablespoons of soy sauce. And it's a similar process taking the spoon. You can also use the whisk. Um, I'll find a spoon works fine. You just kind of press the soy sauce together at the side of the bowl until it's all dissolved. Um, then it's two tablespoons of rice vinegar. Uh, and yeah, if you don't have rice vinegar, you you can use regular vinegar. Uh, I prefer to be a little more authentic as possible. Uh, now let's, let me look at the recipe and try and do it in order. Okay, a half teaspoon of black pepper, ground black pepper. And let's see, okay, so 
they say a tablespoon of uh, sugar, uh, you can substitute honey, you can substitute agave syrup or agave nectar, which is what I uh, use. Um, agave nectar is a little more sweet than sugar, or the equivalent amount of sugar. So it's about, uh, I'd say about three quarters of a tablespoon. And another nice thing about that is you don't have to sit there and make sure the sugar is dissolved. <clears throat> and sesame oil. And sesame oil um, provides a, a nice flavor. Um, I say put in a tablespoon of that. There's a, there was a typo in the recipe. I apologize for that. It says tea tablespoons. It's really one tablespoon. Um, but hopefully you figured that out. So one tablespoon of sesame oil. And there's the seasoning. Now I think we're ready to cook. Okay. When I call for, I think it was um, cooking oil, half cup. Yeah, that will probably do it. Okay, so I'm going to do half a cup of oil. Yeah, it's a good thing I found peanut oil. And if you open up, unseal the peanut oil. half a cup, pour that into the wok, and of course, since electricity is not working, I have to light it on the stove the old-fashioned way. Chinese cooking. Right. And I'm, yeah. uh, I'm going to take a couple dried chili peppers and stick them into the oil as it's heating up. And that's a, a very personal thing. Some people want a lot of spice, some people want a little spice, some people want no spice. Um, what I'm doing by putting two peppers in um, will provide what I think is a little spice. Dad. What temperature Let do you put the oil? It's uh, plain, if you can see that. I'm gonna try and hold the phone and cook with my other hand. So. Do you always use dark sesame oil? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been using this brand of sesame oil for for years, um, but again, that's personal taste and or what you have available. Okay, the, the oil is starting to smoke. So I'm gonna put the phone down. Hi, 
chicken. Danny, is it a high heat? I'm going to put the chicken in. And what I ended up with um, was really like about two pounds, maybe a little over two pounds of chicken breast. So this is a lot of chicken, you know, can't, uh, if you're getting a walk, I would, I would say you can cook a small amount in a large wok, but you can't cook a large amount in a small wok. I would also suggest, uh, mine's a carbon steel wok, which is a little bit of a pain in the neck to keep, take care of because you got to season it first with oil. And then you got to, when you wash it, you got to dry it so it doesn't rust. Um, but in the long run, they're better than, say, a stainless steel wok. All right, so while the, the chicken is cooking, I'm going to add the garlic and ginger. Right, so garlic and ginger is in there. And, you know, I keep stirring that around. Was there a question there? Yes. The oil has to smoke? Uh, it, it should, just a little bit. It was starting to smoke when I put the chicken in. All right, and if you have, uh, preferably it works best on a gas stove, but if you have an electric stove, they Chances are either the wok will come with it or you can buy it separately. It's a little metal ring that concentrates the heat uh, towards the wok. And I'd also suggest that if you Get a lock that um, you make sure it has wooden, you know, to be wearing mitts or something. Uh, so the chicken is mostly done. We're going to add the vegetables. And there, there's different ways to do this too. Sometimes I cook the vegetables part way and then take them out, put them on a plate, and uh, then cook the chicken. Uh, and then at towards the end, add the vegetables back in. But typically the vegetables don't take long. part of the idea of cutting them into small pieces. So right, you can see how all the, the colors look now. You know, it's a nice uh, array of different colors. Will end up being very appetizing. All right, I'm gonna.
turn the camera back around so I can stop the phone up. And all, also uh, talking about spike for a moment. Uh, you know, as you saw, I've put in dried chilies. There's things like, you know, uh, hot oil, sriracha, uh, hot, you know, various Asian hot sauces that you can put in during the cooking process. And, or you can leave it all out if you don't want it to be spicy. So now I, I take the seasonings, I give it a stir, just make sure everything's all mixed up and again, using sugar, make sure it's all dissolved. And then I just pour it in. Give it a quick stir so that the seasoning coats everything. And turn off the flame. And we're done. And I will show you what this looks like. There it is. It looks beautiful. Great job. Oh, thank you. Hold it. Wait, wait a second. And he did that in the dark. And you need chopsticks. <laughs> You're getting accolades. Someone just said he could eat that right now. I am. Oh. And a fortune cookie. Any other questions? I'm gonna find out what my fortune is. If you have oil still in the wok, after adding everything, what can you do? Uh, well, I mean, generally speaking, it will end up getting mixed in with the food. Um, so if you have too much, um, you'll uh, end up with like oil and... Never been able to... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could take uh, if you're trying to just get rid of the oil with, without, um, you know, the you know the sauce and vegetables and chicken, whatever, um, I guess you could take a, a paper towel and kind of roll it up and try and soak up the oil. But I wouldn't do that while it, the flame is on. <laughs> yeah, or else you'll be like how you are right now. <laughs> uh, is it yeah. Is the recipe available? I, I sent out the recipe, uh, or I sent it to Danny and Elliot, and they sent it out. Yeah, so we, we sent it to everyone who registered. I know a couple of you have um, have said that they did not get it. Um, so Larry, if you would resend me, send me the recipe again, and I will send it to the people that didn't seem to get it. Okay, and now what I'll do is I'll make the correction on the amount of sesame oil. Um, so, and just FYI, uh, I'll say the my fortune says haste does not bring success. There you go. E excellent. Well, thank so Larry. Thank you. You obviously put a lot of time and effort and thought, and you were very nimble in reacting. I'm not so sure I would have been able to pull off what you just did with no power. 
Um, and um, a gas situation, which is good because if it was electric, we would have had her definitely rescheduled. <laughs> yeah. So can, I, thank you. I would have been cooking on my gas grill out in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm going to um, take you off. And okay. All right. So hopefully everyone enjoyed that. If you missed the beginning, um, this is hopefully part of our now monthly cooking affinity group. And what I would really like is some of you to step up and host and teach the next one. It can be whatever you'd like. Um, so Larry did that and we were delighted, but we, uh, this won't be successful if we don't have lots of people wanting to teach us. So uh, John did a great job um, last time and Larry also now. So please contact me and I will be happy to sign, sign us up and then we'll sign out for the next FJMC cooking webinar. The idea of this then is that we all gather a convention a little less than a year away, God willing, in, in Chicago and, um, and do something special when, when we're there, which is uh, first week in July. So um, finally, um, we also have a Thank baseball, you. yes. Uh, and let me interrupt for a second. Because I want to explain, some people got confused. So I'm sorry if I confused you. What's going to happen is we're going to send out a notice about this class. When you register, you're going to get the Zoom link. Please write it down. After you register and we have your email, we will then send you the uh, menu and the ingredients that you need to buy. All right, so you have to look after you register for that Zoom link. That's how we're doing it. All right. Sorry to interrupt, Danny. I just wanted to... No, that's okay. That's okay. And it's always the same, you know, for those of you now that register, it's always going to be this Zoom link. So, um, so finally, uh, the last paid political advertisement is we have another affinity group uh, as well, and that is a baseball um, slash football affinity group. And our, our second meeting of that group will be this coming Tuesday. So register the same. Uh, there's a different link to register, um, and you can see that on the uh, Google Drive, just like you did for this one. Or you can just contact me directly, and uh, we're going to meet a rabbi, a young younger rabbi, meaning under 50, who is currently the associate rabbi in uh, Minnesota, in Minneapolis, a Temple Aaron. And he calls himself the great Rabino, and he is a sports fanatic, and he has interviewed every living Jewish baseball player, um, and he's going to tell us about his shtick, um, and again, open to all. So that's this coming Tuesday, same time, same place. All you have to do is register, and we would love to see you there. If baseball's not your thing, that's fine too. Um, we'll see you at the next cooking webinar. Uh, thank you to my friends from Temple Emanuel that have joined us from, um, from my store. Uh, Rick and John, thank you for joining. And then of course, um, everyone else who is signed up tonight. And as Elliot said in the beginning, it's not just for FJMC guys, we want everyone to come. So please pass the, pass the word on, on these, the more the merrier. All right, so thank you Yashikach to Larry again. And uh, wish everyone, uh, if you do, have an easy fast next uh, to Shabbat and uh, enjoy the rest of the summer. We'll see you in August with our next cooking uh, webinar. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. And thank you. Thank you, Danny, for coordinating this. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> My pleasure. See you later, guys. Stay well, all. Bye bye. IKC service tomorrow. Oh, by the way, very special personal friend of mine is leading the Friday late afternoon International Kiddush Club service, and his name is Cantor Zach Mondro. So if you know Zach, you know who I'm talking about. If you don't, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss this. 
You can sign on at five o'clock or 5.30. If you need the link, contact me and you'll have a great time. Zach's a very, becoming a very good friend and he's a hoot. So see you, everyone. Take care. Thank you.